Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Jim. I want to welcome you to our class on the attributes of God. Again, I want to welcome everyone. Uh, if you join us, please press the microphone button on the app. That'll mute yourself. And if you have any questions, you can type them in the uh, comments, and also you can email me at pastorjim.tcorc at gmail.com. And, and this morning we're going to be discussing the sovereignty of God. Again, we meet every Saturday morning at 8.30 Central Time, right here on freeconferencecall.com. Uh, the classes will also be posted on Facebook and the church's YouTube channel. And I'd like to open us up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to uh, study your word, meditate on your word, to bring us closer to you, God, as we study your attributes, your character, God. We, we hope to be enlightened just how powerful and awesome you are. I ask you to, Holy Spirit, guide me as we go through this class and also everyone watching now and watching later. Holy Spirit, touch their hearts, touch their minds, teach them about our almighty God. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. The sovereignty of God. He rules over all things with absolute control. I will repeat that. He rules over all things with absolute control. This will be the main point that we're going to be discussing today. As we go through today's session, try and keep that fact in the forefront of your mind. And I'll repeat it again. He rules over all things with an absolute power. Power, but it's absolute. It's definite. It's truthful. It's absolute power. Again, I'd like to acknowledge that the written material for this study is from the Attributes of God Sermon and Teaching Series by Dr. Steve Lawson and One Passion Ministries. We greatly appreciate Dr. Lawson and One Passion Ministries for allowing us to use their material. Resounding throughout the pages of Scripture is the proclamation that God is king. And the concept most closely associated with his kingship is his sovereignty. To say that God is sovereign is not to say merely that he is stronger than anyone else, although this is true. Rather, to call him sovereign is to ascribe to him a rule and authority that transcends space and time, leaving nothing outside its scope. In this lesson, Dr. Lawson helps us to examine the nature and extent of God's sovereign rule, showing how a biblical understanding of this topic can change the way we view the progress of history, the events of the present world, and the circumstances of our own lives. What is sovereignty? Sovereignty is a, a word that you really don't hear much today. 
I mean, think about it. In your day-to-day life, do you hear the word sovereignty? So we need to ask ourselves this simple question. What is sovereignty? What does it mean? Sovereignty is supreme in power. A supreme lord or ruler. Superior to all others. Chief. Possessing supreme dominion. A supreme magistrate, a king, royalty. One who possesses the highest authority without control. So you look at all those statements and who does that best describe? God Almighty. God is not passive. God rules and God reigns. That's another statement I would want everyone, including myself, to repeat over and over again. God rules and God reigns. The sovereignty of God is the foundational truth of all Christian theology, that God is and the God who is is the God who reigns. He actively reigns and presides over the entirety of his created order. This is the immovable mountain of God's supreme authority and his right to exercise his sovereignty. The sovereignty of God is his absolute, active, and continual reign over the heavens and earth. It is his undisputed right to govern all that he has created as God by the free exercise of his supreme right rules over all with unhindered, unrivaled majesty. It is the cornerstone of all divine truth. And again, I'll repeat that last sentence. This is so true. It is the cornerstone of all divine truth. Psalm 33, verses 1 through 22. Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. For the word of the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all their host. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. Amen. Amen. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. The people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looks down from heaven. He sees all the children of man. From where he sits enthroned, he looks out on all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. The king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse 
is a false hope for salvation, and by its great might it cannot rescue. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, that he may deliver their soul from death and keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield, for our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Amen, amen, and amen. Psalm 93, verses 1 through 5. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He has put on strength as his belt. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. Mightier than the thunders of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your decrees are very trustworthy. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. Amen. Ephesians 1, verses 3 through 12. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons, through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory, Amen. And now our class objectives. To explain the foundational importance of God's sovereignty. To demonstrate the extent of God's sovereignty, which stretches through space and time. To instill awe in the face of God's limitless power to show how God's sovereignty ought to provide comfort to those facing adversity. Like so many of the other attributes of God, God's sovereignty is an attribute that for us can be challenging to accept as reality and truth. Also, his sovereignty is not preached and taught about often enough. It really isn't. When was the last time you heard someone preach about God's sovereignty, that he rules and he reigns? And just like we mentioned earlier, God's sovereignty is the foundational truth of all Christian theology. Not just some of Christian theology, but all of Christian theology. There is not a square inch in the whole domain of our human existence over which Christ, 
who is sovereign over all, does not cry mine. Awesome quote from Abraham Kuyper. God's sovereignty has ever appeared to me a great part of his glory. It has often been my delight to approach God and adore him as a sovereign God. Jonathan Edwards. I want to repeat that one again. God's sovereignty has ever appeared to me a great part of his glory. It has, it has often been my delight to approach God and adore him as a sovereign God. Again, from Jonathan Edwards. Some key points for today. The God who reigns. God's sovereignty refers to his right to rule, govern, and preside over all things. As we saw in the definition of sovereignty, God is the one, or God is one, who is sovereign. He is supreme in rank, power, and authority. The scriptures repeatedly attest to God's matchless rule, especially in the enthronement psalms, which resound with the theme that the Lord reigns. Like in Psalms 96.10, 97.1, and 99.1. A simple way to put it, God is our creator. It's his rules. He's the boss. That's it. He rules. He reigns. God's sovereignty communicates his power over his enemies. Too many Christians live as if the devil is actually sovereign, fearing the effects of his power and his malice in their lives. Their focus seems to be so much more on the devil. The devil this, the devil that. The devil this. We, we must remember even though Satan's power is greater than ours, it is nothing, nothing compared to the power of our sovereign Lord. Again, our sovereign rule, our sovereign Lord is infinitely more powerful than the devil. God's sovereignty establishes his power over our circumstances. Our future does not rest in the hands of human beings. Our destiny does not depend upon blind chance. And I'm going to repeat those. Our future does not rest in the hands of human beings. Our destiny does not depend upon blind chance. Rather, God is actively involved in our lives, directing them according to his holy purposes. Again, just like many of God's attributes, these facts are very difficult for our flesh and our human egos to accept. But as we grow in our relationship with God, we, we gradually let go of that. God's reign is not limited to the past or future events. It permeates our present reality. Again, this one is definitely worth repeating. God's reign is not limited to the past or future events. It permeates our present reality. God was, is, and will forever be the same. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Again, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
God's reign is not limited to specific enclaves of Christian influence, but is cosmic in scope. So God doesn't just reign over us. He reigns over the cosmos. God's eternal purposes. God's sovereign rule extends back to eternity. All you have to do is look at Genesis 1.1 in the beginning. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 articulates God's eternal sovereignty in salvation that Christians are predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. The counsel, then the will, then the purpose. The counsel of God refers to the inter-Trinitarian deliberation that preceded the creation of the universe. The will of God refers to his divine decisions and desires, which encompass and establish each aspect of our lives. The purpose of God refers to his divine determination to carry out his righteous will. God's act of predestination guarantees that his sovereign will is brought about in totality. Areas of divine sovereignty. God's sovereignty governs creation. Everything that exists has God as its source. This goes back to week two when we covered the self-existence and aseity of God. All things belong to God and exist for his glory, including us. Plants, creatures, and the forces of nature are all under God's complete control. Psalm Chapter 33, verses 6 through 9, emphasize that. God's sovereignty governs history and providence. Rather than simply create things and set them in motion, God orders and directs human affairs. Psalm 33 verses 10 and 11. In all circumstances, God is at work for the glory of his name and the good of his people. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. God's sovereignty governs salvation. God predestines his people for salvation based on his eternal purposes, not his simple foreknowledge of human actions and decisions. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 7 go into detail. God's choice of his elect was made by himself and for his glory. We don't know who God has predestined. That is why we are to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with whoever, wherever, and whenever we can. And now let's go over some study questions. Because the devil is stronger than we are, Christians are wise to fear him. True or false? And the answer is false. We covered that God is infinitely stronger than the devil. Yes, the devil is stronger than us, but we lean on God.
Question two, a factual understanding of divine sovereignty must recognize that A, God in his sovereignty ordained that Satan would rebel against him. B, the devil only rarely thwarts God's purposes. C, God will become fully sovereign once he defeats Satan. Or D, God's power is vastly superior to Satan's power. And of course, the answer is God's power is vastly superior to Satan's power. And that kind of bounces back to question one. Now, this is a really difficult question. I contemplated on the answers. Very difficult question. So with that in mind, because God is sovereign, which of the following statements is false? The future ultimately does not rest in human hands. God's rule includes the past, present, and future. Humans have very little influence over their own lives. D. A Christian's destiny does not depend on blind chance. And again, this was really, really difficult. I wish there was an answer D. None of the above. Because they all are true. But the closest answer would be C. Humans have very little influence over our lives. God has the major influence over our lives, but we do have some influence. I wouldn't necessarily categorize it as very little influence. And I would love to hear everyone's comments about this question. What do you think? Question four. Before the creation of the world, God chose to save certain individuals according to A, his foreknowledge of those who would respond positively to the gospel, B, the kind intention of his will, C, each individual's future works of love, D, they're belonging to a faithful church. And the answer is B, the kind intention of his will. So let's repeat that. Before the creation of the world, God chose to save certain individuals according to the kind intention of his will. Now again, the last question, again, a really, really difficult question. It could really depend on which side of the free will argument that you fall on. So with that in mind, while it is true that God is sovereign over all, he nevertheless makes room where he withholds his influence so as to preserve the free choices of individual humans. And after much thought and prayer, reading it over and over again, I chose false. I can't imagine God withholding his influence. Maybe he tones it down a touch, steps back just a touch. But to say he withholds it, that's why I chose false. If you think the answer is true, I would love to have a discussion about that. And as we get ready to close some Bible study and discussion questions, again, keep a journal while doing this class, especially going over the questions at the end and the study and discussion questions. How can God's absolute sovereignty 
comfort those who are facing adversity. Is there a situation in your life where you can find relief by meditating on God's sovereignty? How does God's sovereignty over salvation keep Christians from relying on their own works? Consider various churches that you have visited or Christians with whom you have spoken with. Do you see a correlation between their views, their view of God's sovereignty and the way they speak about him and live their lives? That's a really good question. How would you counsel another Christian who lives in fear of Satan and the forces of evil in this present world? Are there specific passages that would be instructive? And again, during the week, go over these four questions. As you're reading your Bible, as you're praying, go over these questions. And and I'm sure God's going to reveal some things about you and your relationship with him. And next week, again, Saturday at 8.30, we may adjust the start time a touch. We may start at 9 maybe 9.30, but I'll put out notifications. So next week we will be covering the holiness of God. And you're going to see that the holiness of God and the sovereignty of God are kind of like peas and carrots. They go they go so well together. Not that any of the other attributes of God don't go well together, but you think about it. God is sovereign and he's holy. God is holy and he's sovereign. So please join us next week if you can. Again, uh, the video and audio will be posted on Facebook and our YouTube channel. And I believe the City of Refuge Church's website. And I'd like to close us out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity to present your word this morning to help people better understand that you are sovereign. You are a mighty and sovereign God. You rule and you reign. It's my prayer that everyone out there has a wonderful week. Be safe. And in Jesus' mighty name, amen. I look forward to seeing everyone next week. And again, if you have any questions or comments, you need some prayer, reach out to me. You can reach out to me on social media or my email, pastorjim.tcorc at gmail.com. And I wish everybody a wonderful rest of your weekend. God bless and be safe.